Okay, Intel 12th gen looking juicy. Thoughts? <laughs> uh, I don't have too many thoughts. As we've said countless times now on the channel, I don't really, I don't even follow probably upcoming products as much as you guys would. I, I, I under, certainly understand the interest from you guys, but we're more focused on testing the products we have, uh, looking back at older products. I really like looking at, like I've done recently with the 8700K, uh, looking at how that's performing today compared to its competitor and how that compares to you know an, an original test or an older test from years gone. So that, that kind of stuff's far more interesting to me. So I'm more focused on that than looking at rumors or leak stuff or even, yeah, I guess when it's announced, even that's more interesting to me. But at the same time, I don't think about the announcement too much. I just wait until we get it and start doing the testing. But have you got nothing to say, Tim? Yeah, I'm in a pretty similar boat. I mean, I tend to just you know, people talk about it in our Discord community, for example, and you come across it on places like Twitter where people talk about these rumors. And, you know, just over time, being in the industry and covering news and that sort of thing, you, you tend to see that the rumors, while they're not always inaccurate, they certainly tend to be on the optimistic side, especially quite a way out from when the products actually become mm -hmm. available. I think we saw something similar with the Intel Rocket Lake stuff, the 11th gen processors, where there was a lot of talk about how good that architecture would be. Um, you know, it wasn't going to be a world-beating architecture, but it was certainly promising decent performance uplifts. At least that's what the rumors were suggesting. And then mm -hmm. you get closer and closer to launch, and some of the claims start getting walked back and eventually it comes to the reviews and you see that performance, well, isn't as impressive as some of those early things were suggesting. Very similar situation with Zen 2 as well. I remember there was a lot of talk about, you know, how is Zen 2 going to improve gaming performance over Zen 1 and Zen Plus? There was a lot of rumors and talk and, you know, these leaked benchmarks coming out or supposedly leaked benchmarks. And then it turns out that the actual performance that we're getting is not actually in line with what those rumors were suggesting. And it might not be far off, but you know, if someone's claiming a 20% performance improvement and it turns out to be 10%, that's enough to mm. significantly change the discussion. So when I see these rumors of Intel 12th generation offering you know, 20% better performance or 10% better performance or whatever it is in single or multi-threaded, it's like, it's nice to say that now, but how accurate is that information? Like going on past data, we could say that those rumors are unlikely to be accurate because they tend to exaggerate performance claims. So that's why I tend not mm -hmm. to get too carried away in making it like an Intel versus AMD battle right now because the part isn't available. Like we don't, mm -hmm. you know, is it worth getting all caught up in how good it's looking if we don't really know? It could be another Zen 2 situation where the performance is good in one area but not as impressive in the areas that people care about. And you kind of, you, know, you try and extrapolate like Cinebench numbers to gaming and it doesn't really work. So, yeah, those are just all mm. the considerations that I like to make with with thinking about rumors. It, you know, it's nice to sort of look at some of the architectures that are coming up. Like we know it's going to use big and little cores. That stuff interests me. But the actual performance claims, mm -hmm. I just don't find that information super valuable, I guess. 